I would like to present some feeding curves for guest dating sows and I would like to have some focus on the feeding of guest dating sows because we actually we have to look into how do we get the optimal implantation, how do we feed the sows to get the optimal uh, back fat levels at farrowing and, and most of all we also need to feed the sows to get uh, as positive effect of, on birth weights as possible. First of all, I would like to state that I do not believe we should feed the sows below their requirements in any part of the gestation. We should feed the sows in order to secure optimal placentation formation in order to get some strong vital fetuses. Moreover, we should look at the protein level and the lysine level in the diets. If we feed high lysine, high protein throughout gestation, the sow will get too much gain of body uh, muscle mass. We do not want that to happen. We want to control body weight gain of the sows. We want to favorize restorage of back fat throughout gestation. When we look at feeding curves for gestating sows, we divide the sows into three categories. We have the uh, fat sows having 15 millimeters of back fat or more at the time of weaning. Then we have the medium sows having 12 to 14 millimeters of back fat at weaning. And then we have the thin sows having 11 millimeters of back fat or less at the time of weaning. The division into these uh, three categories is because we want to use the right feeding curves. We want to have 14 to 17 millimeters of back fat at the subsequent farrowing. So, in general, we could say that the, the thin sows, we feed them a high feeding level as shown on the graph. We give them a high feeding level for the first four weeks of gestation in the implantation period, both in order to get a good implantation, but also to restore the fat as, uh, the back fat as quickly as possible after service. The fat sows uh, at weaning, we don't want them to grow extra, but we still want them to have a good implantation, so they're fed at a lower level. If we look at the graph, uh, all three groups are giving the same amount of feed from four weeks prior to farrowing and until farrowing. These 3.4 kilos of feed is given both to give the sow for maintenance, but also to secure the fetal growth and the growth of the udder. So this is of importance, and this is all to obtain the good sow at the next farrowing. Looking at the feeding curves for gestating sows, I would like to uh, show the consequences of choosing the right levels of lysine and also protein. Uh, the main concern is if we look at fat sows, uh, going from around 4.1 to 4.2 grams of SID lysine per kilo of feed, uh, giving one gram extra will increase uh, the maternal gain of around five kilo of muscle mass throughout one gestation. So the main concern will be that instead of growing around 53 kilos, uh, including fetuses, the sow will grow around 58 kilos. So the consequence will be we get heavier sows and that will be heavier for each cycle. Looking at, uh, at the medium sows, having 12 to 14 millimeters of back fat uh, at weaning, if we feed those according to the recommended uh, feeding curve throughout gestation, they will gain around 56 kilos. That includes both the maternal and the fetal gain. That's when they are fed a diet with 4.1 to 4.2 grams of SID lysine per kilo of feed. If we increase the lysine content, the consequence will be that the maternal gain will, will be even five kilo higher. So the result will be heavier and more muscular sows, and that's not what we aim for. What is the optimal feeding level in late gestation, the last three to four weeks prior to farrowing? In Segus, we've done some studies where we looked at the effects of giving additional feed in late gestation. So, when we had 3.4 kilos of feed and added one kilo extra of feed, that didn't have any effect on birth weight. We also looked at giving extra feed and extra amino acids and extra protein for late gestation. That showed no effect on birth weights. So 3.4 kilo is the optimal level for sows in late gestation. To sum up uh, about feeding of gestating sows, we need to choose the right feeding curves for the sows dependent on the back fat measurement at weaning. Furthermore, we need to use diets with a low content of lysine, a low content of protein, in order to favorize restorage of back fat to avoid excess protein uh, gain and muscle gain throughout gestation. We don't want the sows to get heavy. We want the sows to have the perfect back fat measurement at farrowing.